Hi, I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to share with you the difference between being naturally thin and obsessively dieting to lose weight. So before we get started, yes, I am pregnant. If you can't tell, I'm about six months pregnant when I'm recording this video. And what I'm going to share with you today really is something that I did before kids, while having kids, and now while I'm having and pregnant with my third child. So it really is something that you can do in any phase of your life. And I really want you to think about and in this video take away the difference between the what happens in our brain when we're obsessing and when we're using strict diets and when you're using restriction versus when you just have the calm and the freedom of being naturally thin. So your body and your brain, they have an innate pleasure match in how they want to experience the pleasure of food. What happens when we're obsessing, when we're using strict diets, when we're using restriction, is we're trying to override our brain's desire for food. If you think about our brain and our body for a minute, our body wants to eat when it's hungry. Our body wants to eat food that feels good in our body. Our body wants to feel light and airy and energized and comfortable. Our body wants to stop eating when we're satisfied. So if that's what our body genuinely wants, that's our body's pleasure for food, that's our body's enjoyment for food, then the only thing that gets in the way is our brain. And this is why it can be especially difficult for women that are very successful, brilliant, intellectual, type A, analytical, because we spend so much time in our brains, we're sort of drawn to those obsessive diets. But what happens when we do that is then our brain's desire for food doesn't match our body's desire for food. And so we're constantly chasing and trying to override this brain desire for food that doesn't match our body's desire for food. And then we need willpower and then we need portion control and then we need this diet and we need that diet and we need to train for a marathon and do exercise programs. And we drive ourselves nuts. And ironically, the more and more we try all of the obsessive dieting, the more and more we try the restriction, the more and more we try eating in a short eating window, the harder and harder it gets. Because what happens is, the more we restrict and the more we obsess, the more we're in our minds, the less we're listening to our body. So then our body's desire for food and our brain's desire for food, the match between them starts to grow further and further apart. So I'm gonna share with you an idea that I call the desire vase to really illustrate this for you. But before I do a brief introduction, a little about me, my name is Laura Dixon. I'm a certified life coach, a certified weight loss coach, and a certified health coach. And I'm a former CPA. And I was a director at a Fortune 500 tech company as a CPA, making a really great salary, like killing it. I was promoted well above people that had way more experience than me. I was really good in my career. But then I couldn't understand how can I be so successful over here in my career and in other areas of my life, but struggle to lose weight and keep it off. It didn't make any sense to me. And it wasn't until I really understood this. And this is really particular, in particular for women that have this type of personality. I see it time and time again. I saw it in myself and now I've seen it in the hundreds and thousands of women that I've helped lose weight. Those of us that have this really intellectual type A analytical mind, how we've created that success in our career is through using our really brilliant mind. And so then we think, well, the answer to losing weight must be to be in our head, to overthink, to overanalyze, to problem solve all of the time in our head about losing weight but it can never work that way, right? If it did, none of us would be struggling. I would have lost weight the first time I tried because I was very obsessed about it. And I tried all the things, I did everything from raw vegan to keto, to training for a marathon, to doing P90X three different times. And I could never lose the weight and keep it off and have it feel easy, have it feel effortless. I always thought if I have to do this for the rest of my life, I'm gonna drive myself insane. So I want you to imagine a vase. And I want you to imagine a vase is filled all the way up to the top with water. And that vase is your body weight. And the water in the vase is your desire for food. They always match. So the vase is your body weight and the desire, the water in the vase, it's filled all the way up to the top. 
It's your brain's desire for food, not your body's desire for food. Your body weight will always match your brain's desire for food. Because even if your body is saying to you, hey, I'm not hungry, or hey, I'm satisfied, or hey, when you eat this food, it really doesn't feel good in my body, right? Our brain can easily override that, right? We all do it. And so your body weight, that vase, matches your brain's desire for food. And because those of us that are really intellectual and smart and analytical and type A and maybe have an obsessive tendency, what we do is we try to fix that desire for food. But it never works. So what most of us do when we're dieting, when we're eating in a short window, counting our calories, counting points, counting anything, restricting, when we're doing any of that, what happens is I want you to imagine this vase, your body weight, and it's filled all the way up to the top with water with your brain's desire for food. What happens is we're like, okay, well, I want a smaller body weight, right? I want a smaller vase. But what we do when we stay in our heads and we try to overthink and outsmart our body is, let's say you have a 200 pound vase. That was about me at my heaviest weight. At 5'11", I was about 200 pounds. And my deal with God was always, could I just be 160 pounds and never worry about this again? So I was like, okay, I want to go from this 200 pound vase filled all the way up to the top with water with my brain's 200 pounds of desire for food. And I want to go to a 160 pound vase. But here's what happens when we're dieting and we're obsessing and we're restricting and we're doing all the things. I want you to imagine taking 200 pounds of that desire and trying to pour it into a 160 pound vase. It will inevitably overflow always. So that overflow may either look like losing weight, because right when you start to pour that water into the smaller vase, you can do it for a little bit, but it will inevitably overflow. And that may look like putting weight back on. Or I want you to imagine that overflow looks like the water starts to overflow. So you lose weight for a little bit, and then it starts to overflow at that, in my example, in that 160 pounds. And as the water overflows, we're like neurotically trying to like get paper towel and get a rag and like clean it up. And now it's on the floor and now it's on the table and now the wood's messed up. We drive ourselves insane trying to stop the overflow from happening. So if the options are either lose the weight and put it back on or drive yourself crazy trying to keep the weight off, those aren't great options, right? So here's what I want to offer to you. There's actually another option. That option is to learn how to match your brain's desire for food with your body's desire for food. So when you go from that 200 pound vase to 160 pound vase in my example, rather than trying to force that amount of water into a smaller vase, you simply reduce your brains over desire for food. So that when you have that 160 pound vase, when you have that body weight you want, your desire for food is still filled all the way up to the top. So you don't feel you don't feel deprived. You don't feel restricted. You don't feel like you're missing out on anything. You still have a desire that's filled all the way up to the top with your vase. But what happens is that there's no longer a battle. It's the most freeing experience I've had in my life. And for me, what happened is, even though I had this deal with God, if I could just get to 160 pounds and never worry about my weight ever again, when I really started to listen to my body's desire for food, which meant learning the tools to listen to my hunger, to know what to do in those intense moments of a craving that weren't white knuckle my way through or distract myself with something, but really listen to my body and stop battling myself, I lost another 20 pounds. So I'm pregnant right now, so I don't weigh 140 pounds, but my easy weight for me at 5'11", is 140 pounds, and I never thought that would have been possible. I thought there's no way that my body will be able to stay there easily and effortlessly, but effortlessly. But that is what is possible when you learn how to match your brain's desire for food with your body's desire for food. We all have this innate match. It already exists, right? The only reason your brain has more desire for food than your body is because a lot of the dieting we've done, right? That's why the more we diet, the harder it feels. When we're two and three years old, we don't have that mismatch between our brain and our body. It's something we learn, which is the best news I have for you. But because you've learned it, it means you can also 
unlearn it. And so when you unlearn it, then you're able to come back to this place of ease and effortlessness where you can be in your body. You can feel light and energized and comfortable. You can still have indulgences, right? It doesn't mean you're eating clean and perfectly all of the time, but you just love being in your body and it's easy to be at the weight where you finally feel like you are at home. And so the solution isn't be in my head more, count more, be more meticulous, find more meal planning solutions, find another diet. That's only going to increase your brain's desire for food. The solution is to learn how to listen to your body, which is difficult sometimes for us because we don't necessarily know how, maybe if you're anything like me, I was so in my head all of the time. And I'm like, but that's how I do my career. That's how I do my success over here. And so it was a different skill set for me to learn when it came to losing weight. But then now I have all of the mental freedom I could have ever imagined because I genuinely, I don't think about my weight. I don't worry about food. I don't worry about meal planning, anything like that. There's just so much more space and calm. And so that's what I want to share with you. And I want to first tell you, this is different than intuitive eating. There's a common misconception with intuitive eating that intuitive eating is eat whatever you want in the moment. Sort of, kind of, but that's not quite what intuitive eating really is. But that's stereotypically what we hear with intuitive eating is just eat whatever you want. But when you've been dieting, and especially when you've been obsessing and restricting and eating in short windows and doing all those things, when you've been doing that, what happens is then when you take your brain to the place of, hey, brain, eat whatever you want, whenever you want, what happens is you're not eating for your body, right? You're not listening to how your body wants to eat your diet brain is going to rebel against the years of restriction and the years of dieting and the years of counting, and it's not going to listen to your body at all. <laughs> so when I did intuitive eating, I was eating cookie dough like three times a day. Pretty sure my body wasn't saying, hey, thanks, Laura, for eating cookie dough three times a day. No, that was just my diet brain rebelling against the years of restriction. What intuitive eating really is, which is often misunderstood, is listening to what your body body wants, not what your diet brain wants. But when you get your brain on board with your body's desire for food, they're one in the same. There is no longer a battle. And then you have that ideal weight that you want to be at your naturally thin weight, that desire vase, right? Your body weight is that vase and your water is still filled all the way up to the top because your brain and your body, they're not fighting with each other. You just have this match. So Below this video, I want to share with you the five steps to come back to a brain and a body that have a pleasure match in how they experience the pleasure of food, where your brain and your body, they have the same amount of desire for food, so they're not battling each other constantly. So click the button below to watch that video to learn the five steps to becoming naturally thin, which means having that desire base, that body weight, where your brain and your body have a desire for food that matches, where it's easy and it's effortless and it's just something you can do for the rest of your life without the extreme dieting and obsessing and restriction. All right, click that button below. I will walk you through those five steps. I cannot wait to see you there.